You are looking live at Titan Field on the campus of the University of Detroit Mercy for today's A-Sun Division I matinee action featuring your host, the Detroit Mercy Titans, welcoming in the Colonials from Robert Morris University. Thanks for joining me, everybody. My name is John Losey. I'm going to be your play-by-play -play tour guide of the day for this matinee action, the A-Sun. Joining me to my right, my partner in crime, always the legendary coach here in the state of Michigan, Mr. Greg Norman. Greg, how are you today? It's good. It's now raining again as it was on Saturday against Utah, and uh, weather doesn't seem to, to help this program at all. No, it really doesn't. We were just talking about it. I don't think I've seen the sun in all the games I've done here as the voice of the Titan lacrosse, but we're back at a very a good matchup today, and Greg, let's talk about the uh, Robert Morris. It'll be interesting to see if uh, they play more of a chaotic type of offense that they've ran. Utah came in last Saturday, put up 69 shots, 24 goals. This is a moderate version of that same offense. Craig McDonald, the second-year coach who last year won the A-Sun, beating uh, Utah 16 goals a game, and, and you're only scoring in just less, slightly over seven. So yep. those numbers have to change. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a face-off win for Robert Morris there, but they're going to turn it right back over, which is good. A good start for the Titans to pick it up, head into the offensive zone. Go to the left there. We got rainy weather. It's about 38. I jumped off the airplane, ran home, grabbed my stuff, and I'm here in action bringing this game to you live here on the campus of the University of Detroit Mercy Titans. So Bernie and Majek, really the, the key cogs in the offense for the Titans. We've also seen... Um, a couple other guys get in action too, because it's really, you know, if you focus on two guys, it's been, uh, you know, it's easy to slow down two guys, but you need everyone to really chip in. You have to wonder if the Titans could have forgotten from Saturday after you know 24 goals scored against them. Yeah, you really need to. Short memory. Inside. Got it. There we go. There's a start for the Titans. I'm with you. All alone in front of the net there. Right now, just follow him. Follow nine. Looked like a loose ground ball just picked up the garbage and deposited in the net. The Titans, if they get on the board first. So that's Titans jumping out one nothing. Couldn't draw it up any better there for Coach Colin. Noah Martin with a ground ball there. Alex. See if he can corral it. I'm sorry, no. They got to play scrappy. I mean, that's it. I mean, every, every play, every possession, the Titans just need to keep grinding and grinding. We're going to get a loose ball push. We got an injury down on the field. Hate to see that. Looks like number 39 there for Robert Morris going down. Couldn't see what happened, but he is definitely in pain. James Leary. Yeah, James Leary, long stick midi out of New Fairfield, Connecticut. Looks like a yeah, yeah, why don't we take a break? Then okay, we'll be back. We'll take a quick break in action, and we'll be back here for live lacrosse. This is a university unlike any other university. You will find out a lot about yourself and your career that you're going into. It's prepping me for the real world experiences that I will encounter once I do graduate. With its many leadership programs and classes that integrate service learning into its curriculum, acts as not only a resume builder, but a character builder. And I couldn't put a price tag on it. And it would be invaluable to my career. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. This is a university unlike any other university. You will find out a lot about yourself and your career that you're going into. It's prepping me for the real world experiences that I will encounter once I do graduate. With its many leadership programs and classes that integrate service learning into its curriculum, acts as not only a resume builder, but a character builder. Detroit Mercy itself definitely values who you are as a person to really give me guidance on what it was to be a college student. The ability to connect with many people from different backgrounds. Not only did I take what I learned in the academic world, but I was able to apply that in a professional setting. And the university definitely provided those resources, and I was able to graduate and be the first one of my family to graduate from college. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. And we're back here in the city of Detroit for the A-Sun battle between the Titans and Robert Morris. Number 39, James Leary was helped off the field. Yeah, it's going to be back there, yeah. 
lower leg injury looked like. Could have been a knee, could have been an ankle, but uh, wishing him all the best being a senior. Hate to see that kind of injury, but it happens. So the Colonials trailing one nothing here to the Titans look to clear. You know, talking to Coach Colin, you know, the rides, they, they got to pick it up. You know, they need to pick up any turnover they can get, especially getting that hard rides from the uh, from the attackmen. But Robert Morris will set up shop here in the offensive zone for their first offensive possession of the game. That goal by the Titans that we saw just before the break there, Luke Majek picked up the garbage, deposited in the back of the net to give the Titans a one nothing lead. We got Noah Martin out front here. That's it. Go ahead. John, if the, if the offense looks a little like Utah, Craig McDonald's done a pretty good job of maintaining what was here under uh, Drew McMinn. Yep. They're maybe a little more controlled, and not quite as run and gun as what they were at Utah, but a very similar offense. Yeah, free flowing offense. Good clear there by the Titans. As David Beacom is going to get the clear, and now the Titans looking to pick up another one. Little slippage there. Same place where the kid went down. Yeah, exact same spot. And you got the rain coming down. I mean, with the technology and the cleats these days, especially with the, the new turf here at Titan Field. There's Nate Randall. Sophomore campaign here. Robert Moore stepped in late, played really well last year as a freshman. Tough, tough to do stepping in as a goaltender as a freshman at the Division One level. I'm with you, Alex. Now, although he's ranked 17th in the country in terms of save percentage. Yeah, he's having a great year. Robert Morris got off to a good 3-0 start and ran into a not a buzzsaw. They had two close games against High Point, Hobart, and Jacksonville. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and they lost those two games. The one against Hobart, they lost by two, and they lost again at high point by two. So they were definitely in both of those games. But, you know, the offense really goes through Taggart Clark and David Burr. They're their two leading scorers, number 41 and number 47 for the men in blue. A little more patient than what we saw on Saturday. Yeah, Utah was run and gun. That was that was it was a bad matchup for, for the Titans, you know, pretty much right at the jump, and we knew it. Inside, uh, Hemi got a piece of that one down in front. Good save by Hemi. He makes his first. Has took some heat there from Taggart Clark. And Noah Martin with another ground ball. Good outlet, and here come the Titans. Good start for Coach Colin and the Titans. You know, consistency. I think that's what Coach Colin was talking to me about. He's just consistency, keep grinding, keep grinding. You know, even at the end of that game last night, they were still playing hard. They're always playing hard. You know, we talked to him on Monday, though, when we coach start to use words like resiliency and, and, and some of the, you know, words that which describe hustle and help. You still, at the end of the day, have to have better talent and you have to win. You got to perform. Yeah. This isn't Little League, and that's not a knock on the process. Sometimes you just get out athletes. Yeah, it's not a knock on Little League either. No. So turnover by the Titans in the offensive zone. We'll give it back to Robert Morris. Swing easy when it's breezy. We got a little blustery wind going on out there. How much is that going to affect the, the game, Coach? I don't think the way these guys catch and pass, I don't think it'll have that much to do with it because unlike you know high school or even you know lower level kind of lacrosse, they're zipping passes. Yeah. And the other thing you notice is they're coming back. These guys are coming back to the ball again. Fundamentals you'd expect from a Division One program. Yep. So number nine, Ben Starkey out there. 47 on this side is David Burr. Now, UD looks much more packed in than they were on. They didn't get as spread out against Utah. Yep. So. Oh, good look backside. Oh, good save. Hemi again. There's two for Mr. Hemi. Got a chance to talk to him after the game last week in between uh, breaths as he was extremely tired from facing 69 shots, Coach. And his percentage save is still at 48. I know. Which is yeah. remarkable if you think about it. It really it was. Six. It, I mean, it, you know, you look at the score and you go 24 to 11 and people just kind of laugh at it a little bit. But, but I mean, really when you think about when you look at the numbers for Hemi, I mean, it, it was really impressive. But he also had 19 saves. And if you look right. at the numbers, if you put 69 shots up. Right. That means that Utah spent a lot of time missing the six by six yes, gauge. Yes, exactly. 
But that type of offense, that's what they're doing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like a run and shoot to a, to a certain degree. You know, the other issue you have at L16 is that you run a set, a certain specific set offensively. You can't just change in, you know, the. F oh, good take. Inside, little lefty action. Nice job. Great shot. Ivan Progar, the Brighton, Michigan native, spun outside, found some room, and found the back of the net, and the Titans find themselves up 2 nothing. Greg. Are you surprised? You know, I, 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 you know, I, I, I say no. Because I'm, I'm not. I, I just think that you know when you when you keep just grinding, you're gonna find you're gonna find success. I mean, you really do. And I and, and I have I have belief in, in Coach Colin and the staff. Um, you know, does this hold? We don't know. I mean, Robert Morris is a talented team. They you know they, they won the tournament last year. The ASUN tournament made the you know the big dance. Um, but but this is the kind of start you want to see. You know, we got we it's a grind out there. We got weather. We got everything. It's the D. This is what we do. Well, weather shouldn't bother the the folks from Pittsburgh. True. It, it you know. Utah, you can make an argument that it could be 30 degrees, it could be 60 degrees in a, in a, in a March day. Pittsburgh's going to get the same weather we get, so it would, I think it would be somewhat compatible. Yeah, I think you know you look at the you look at the Titans' record at 0-6. You know how do you how do you not look past them? And and you know then you add in the weather a little bit, you add you know the, the travel, and you go, eh, you kind of give that a huh. But you know. Hey, uh, the Titans are here to play, and let's uh, let's see what they do to capitalize on this. They got the ball again in the offensive zone, up two nothing. An errant pass there, and that's going to not get through, which is good. I don't think anybody's looking at an 0-6 records, and unless it's you know Saturday morning on their computer. Yeah. Game time, they're playing. They're they're doing you know. Well, they're all doing their best, yep. obviously. Yeah, 100. percent But you mentioned last week. Um, you know, you made a comment about just. You know, turnovers or errors at critical times of the game just to kill momentum. And I think we saw that last week against Utah. And Utah capitalized on everything that, that, that the Titans weren't able to do. Well, and I think one of the truths that you have to at least believe is that what do you do as a coach when you have, you're playing against more talent? You can't make it up. Right. And you can't, you know, and you can, there's a certain amount of strategy in, in a high school game you can pull off. In college, the, the, the athletes are too talented. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a fake it till you make it type situation. No. The talent's going to come through at the end. And if you're building, if you're drawing it up in the, you know, the sand the day before, the week before, you're you're bound to fail. Yep. We had mentioned some conversations about having a three-three zone and why they should use it. Good defense there by the Titans. They caused another turnover for Robert Morris. That's the third turnover there by Robert Morris, and we're going to get a timeout in the action. The Titans lead it two nothing. As we talked about this three three zone, you can come in and out of it. But if it's not something you practice every day, think of Georgia Tech football and some of the teams that run the spread versus some teams that run the option. Yep. It's always difficult to practice against a team that runs the option because you don't practice it. Right. And that's a huge difference. And if you know you're going to have less talent than the other team, you've got to work on execution and the things that matter. Yeah, 100%. You know, and, and Robert Morris is talented. I mean, you know, you, you look at their offense up and down the line, and they've got seven players that have scored five five or more goals this season. So they do spread it around. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the you know the players that have been drafted. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're impressive. And you look at Taggart Clark, you know, he's got 15 goals, 6 of 6, 21 points in the season, shooting 72% shots on goal, which is, you know, you put it on net, you're going to score. And the guys that get drafted in the NLL are not the stars necessarily, but they're the guys whose games fit the NLL box lacrosse. Yeah. And that's a whole different animal than, say, a field lacrosse player. Yeah. There's some skills that are, you know, transferable. But when you got four drafted by the NL, that means that you got some guys that can pass inside and, and finish. Yeah, they can pass and finish, and then they're the versatile, right? I think the NL also looking at that versatility, being able to do different things, as you mentioned, because I know you've been doing some work with the NLL for uh, for a couple of years now. It's a. If you ever saw an NL stick, you'd be really surprised that an attack stick, how much different it is than a bagged, a field stick player would be. It's just a. Because that's because the stick doesn't. The ball doesn't stay in the in the pocket very long. Yeah. Taking a look at some uh, other scores, is it's a, it's really an A Sun Wednesday. I like to call it. We got Mercer uh, facing Bellarmine today. We're there in the third quarter there in Louisville with Mercer up 11-5. We got the game going on here. We've got Queens and Lindenwood kicking off in a little bit. But it is really a Wednesday. Happy to be here. At least the the version coming from the D. 
So Craig McDonald calling a timeout there, saying, "Hey, listen, we're down two nothing here. That was another turnover. Let's uh, let's regroup a little bit and uh, and get in a good offensive possession because you know they had one decent shot, but other than that, they haven't done too much. There's inside. That's what they needed. Maybe a set play coming out of the timeout. There's uh, there's Taggart. Well, if you notice on that one, the, the defenseman, the second slide came quick, and they have not been able to hit the the, the cutter. Yep. And they cut. They hit the cutter that side behind three defensemen. Sorry. Yep. Number 16 for Mr. Taggart Clark. That'll get Robert Morris on the scoreboard here and make it a two-to-one game. I was thinking of Jerry Burns' Harvard defense, which is the old Notre Dame defense, which is don't get beat twice. And you can get beat once, but in that case, you got to beat twice. Yep, yep. Robert Morris at the X, number 24, Stephen Delamonica. But the Titans are going to get a win there. Good ground ball, offensive end. And so U of D, UDM. So looking to pick one up here. 2-1 game, rain coming down. And face off so far been pretty even. Yeah. 50-50, two for four for both teams on the, uh, from the X. A little try with that wraparound. And he got, the last time he got it, he got one more step and a goal. This time he shot it a little bit short side. Yep. Robert Morris is now some, starting to make some adjustments. But the other thing is they're, they're chasing him a little bit farther out. So you wonder if they think they can, you know, slap the ball away a little bit farther out on the on the perimeter. Yeah. And we're seeing some, uh, you know, really uh, a couple of guys that, that we hadn't seen, we didn't see last week. Um, you know, we see see Ivan Pronger got that first goal there for the Titans. Uh, he saw a little bit of action last week, but not a ton. But you're seeing some other numbers and names out there that we haven't seen in the past. Are they running a zone? They are. They're running a zone. Picking up out high, fires. Good look there by Bernie, leading goal scorer for the Titans this season. He's got 13 tallies on the air. Alex, I'm with you right now. He's gonna have to push shot Guys running a great defense if you can't determine whether it's man or zone. Right. There's a takeaway. Uh, Zach, I'm with you. That was Growlman you, trying to work. Growlman had a hat trick against yeah, Utah. So a turnover for the oh, Titans. That'll be number three for them. Robert Morris will clear in the offensive zone. How hard is it raining out there? Oh, that's got to be. Oh, we got another player down for Robert Morris. Another slippage. Almost looked like he hit him in the back of the head. Yeah. Bernie's got it. Titans setting up shop in the offensive zone. Leading 2-1 here. Four minutes remaining in the first. Good luck. Ah. Lost it. We've got shrapnel in front of our camera. Here for Robert. Skipping, skipping. In staggered again. Oh, nice behind the head shot. Yeah, little BTB action goes wide. Still with you, Zach. She passes it out. All right. Alex. Fires, that's going to go high and wide. Alex. As that's David Burr, second leading scorer for Robert Morris. Coming in with 13 goals, four assists on the season. Burr, very distinct name. Seinfeld as well. Now UD's in a 1-3-2. Yep. Now that helps to stop from behind. That's a great defense. That's basically a 1-4 a 1-3-1 basketball zone. Yeah. The bottom guy's got to work hard. Oh, no. More slip. Yeah, we're starting to see some slippage, coach. Good green, good ground ball there. Fires long range, a little deep heat. As the downside, John, to a 1-3-2 is that you leave the shooters on top open. Yeah, exactly, so. right. Yeah, and, and you can step in, and these guys can fire it, no question about it. The guy playing on top's got to play somewhat in the middle, and if you get somebody in the opposite yeah. alley, which is where that shot came from, yeah, down it goes. Did Taggart get that one? No. Nope. Yep, that was Taggart. Taggart from Burr. I think that's a common theme here for the Colonials. Taggart from Burr, Burr from Taggart. Also shows, also shows great patience that they're sort of kind of figuring out where the ball should be when to shoot off of some of the defensive changes that uh, Chris is making. Yeah. Is making. yeah, and you can see Taggart, they're, they're moving him around. I mean, they had, you know, he was on the right side, they moved him to the left side, and then they moved him up top. 
you know, find ways to get your players the ball in the position to score. We're going to get a turnover here for the Titans. See if they can break out. Right there. Beckham inside, good move. Ah, Bishop turned the corner, had a good look at it. Maybe some footsteps on that one? Yeah. Rush that a little bit, yep. take, take one more step. Yeah, it, it, it was, he was so open too, he probably didn't think he was going to be that open. I think one of the things that UD offense has to do is find the off lanes to be able to move the ball. And if you think you're going to run with these guys, you're not. Yeah. You got to be able to move the ball quicker. And that's, they've, you know, there's Bishop. That's a perfect example. Bishop redeems himself on that one, sets his feet and scores. The assist coming from Harry Skinner, who, who had not seen any time last week, too. So another, another little uh, addition to the lineup for Coach Colin. Uh, Harry Skinner, a sophomore out of Clarkston, Michigan. When you play the aggressive defense that Robert Morris does, obviously they're, they're ranked 17th in the in the country. They're coming at you aggressively, so either you're drop stepping them or you're trying to find the other angles. But the other point of the offensive side is you've got to find different dodging angles to change their process because they were used to scouting you. Yeah. So Titans 3-2 here. We got a good one. Two minutes remaining here in the first. And we've talked about the, the first quarter woes of the Titans this season, and and uh, we look like we may be, maybe going to cure them for this game, Coach. We'll see. Robert Morris will get the win there. Robert Morris winning four of the six faceoffs here to start. Kind of goes back to a regular right. average that we've got at 30%. Yep. Right a little bit more. Get the picture there. Little give and go action. Got it. Taggart. Mr. Taggart Clark will rack up number two on the day. And you can see where the offense runs through, and it's uh, it's number 41. And of all three of their goals, you notice it's either high to low or low to high. They're not doing, they're not shooting straight. Yeah. Senior. Team leader. Yeah, like if you hit gold, don't move it up. You see the guys on the bench jumping up and down. I just realized that they just stay warm. It's probably that's part of it, Coach. No question about it. We're not saying they're not enthusiastic, but let's let's be clear that it is not, uh, you know, cold and rainy is not the ideal weather. Oh, a little push in the back. No call. You got to be able to pick that ball up. Yeah, and there's one right there that could have been Titans ball, but Robert Morris will corral it. Gets it back to, to Nate Randall, Nate the Great, as I used to call him when I broadcast the Brother Ice high school games when Nate was a senior at Brother Ice back in 2021. John, I've had 100,000 discussions on ground balls. I believe it's will. Either you have the will to get the ball or you don't. I yeah. know that's a, sort of a generalized statement. Sure, but I mean, there's a it, lot of, there's it, a big part of it. It's, it's Rodman getting rebounds. Right. I mean, he'd tip it to himself, tip it to himself. Whatever you got to do, just keep going after it. There's a certain tenacity that just, you know, sometimes you don't have those kind of guys on your team. It's going to be my ball. I'm getting it. So Robert Morris has tied this one up. They have not led in this game. Titans took a one nothing lead, then took a 2 nothing lead. Robert Morris chipping away at it here. We're 3-3 with 30 seconds remaining. Long range again. That one did not get through. Good block. Ball coming out to midfield. A lot of two Titans looking to break. A lot of two-man game in Robert Morris's offense, but you also see rotating triangles within that two-man. Yep. Time ticking down here in the first quarter. See if the Titans get one off. Nope, that one will skip out of bounds, and that should do it here. But an eventful first quarter for the Titans is, I think, probably the, one of their best quarters that we've seen this season, Coach. I don't doubt any doubt about it. We were talking about the triangle. One of the nice things about the triangle, if you've got slides, which you have in lacrosse, somebody's going to be open. So it's think of the Chicago Bulls, how effective oh, the yeah. triangle offense was. And, on, yeah, no question about it. All right, so that'll wrap up the first quarter here in the city of Detroit. We've got a good one here. 3-3 three, three action, Titans, Colonials. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com.
Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. And we're back. Hurricane Detroit on your screen as we've got wind and rain. It does not look good out there, folks. We are somewhat warm here in our palatial hot dog stand uh, booth, which is great. But let's take a look at some of the other action around the A-Sun. Let's get, the, get an update here on those games. We've got, uh, what do we got here, PJ? Crack statistician. Well, we'll take a look at those in a minute here. Up, oh, up, oh, here we go. Yep, we got uh, Mercer up 12-8. Bellarmine making a run to come back on that one. One nothing. Linwood over Queens. That's early, uh, late in the first. But let's get back to live action here. We're going to get a loose ball push on the Titans on the faceoff. Robert Morris is going to pick this one up. Start and stop on your own manually. But we've got snow, we've got rain, we've got anything you want here, Coach. How about yeah. now? Is, 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 is the weather going to affect them now, Coach? No. It's not, because they're both playing in the same way. I got you. I got you. I just, I'm a little shocked that it's snowing and it's 45 degrees. There's a ground ball. Good takeaway there. I think it was Noah Martin with the takeaway. They'll lead the break. Long range, high and wide. We have two rules as the pole comes across the line. You better make a great pass or you better have a, a great shot. Oh, yeah. Long pole cometh. You can't get caught in no man's land if you're coming across the line. Page, I'm going to go to you. Owen Mullet wound up on that one, fired it high and wide over Nate Randall. But the Titans are going to take over. Fires. Whoa. That one's going to be high and wide again. And Titans, more shots on goal. I mean, that's, you know, more activity. Titans now with their ninth shot on goal. But lots of, uh, Trenton, you know, unsettled play. You, and that's where they're going to do okay against these guys. Yep. Good take inside. Good save by Nate Randall. That one will pop out. Exactly. Titans yeah. will recover and reset. We're going to get uh, timeout. Coach Colin? If you look at the defense, they're, you're asking, right there UD's asking game. Robert Morris to shoot from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. And you got shooters. You saw Tagger take, uh, Tagger Clark take one from deep. But we're going to get a timeout here by Coach Colin. Let's take a look at some of the statistics of the first quarter. Uh, Titans leading in ground balls 10-5, which is key. That ground ball, that ground ball game, very important. Jacob Hemme's got three saves. Clears both teams perfect at 100%. Where are we on faceoffs? Faceoffs, we are uh, six for eight in favor of Robert Morris. So, you know, the woes continue a little bit for the Titans. Well, but if you're picking it up by picking, you know, by with true ground balls, then you get at least you're in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, very true. Very true. Turnovers six for Robert Morris, five for the Titans. No penalties, so clean game so far today. We had that one unfortunate injury, uh, you know, for Robert Morris. We haven't got an update on how James Leary is doing after he went down with a look like a lower leg injury in the first quarter. In looking at the A Sun as a conference, it's interesting that Jacksonville, Robert Morris, Utah, all of those programs have coaches, have head coaches who are defensive minded. There were two goaltenders and a couple of long poles. Yeah. Yet they're of the, they, their offenses are, are very unique in, and some of the best offenses in the country. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, and, and you're starting to see, I think, more and more. I mean, I've seen it, uh, you know, especially at the high school level where you're seeing defensive players that are becoming offensive coordinators. And, and what are your thoughts on that? I think that if you look at somebody like John Galloway from Jacksonville, he's a goalie, but guess what? Quarterbacks make great coaches. Right. Line, how many coaches do you see that are linebackers playing football? Most yeah. of them are, are quarterbacks. Yep. And a lot of it has to do with the film room, right? Study. Yep. All right, here we're back at it. 13.50 remaining in this one. All knotted up at threes. Titans long range. Randall got a piece of that one or it went wide. You get a step down from 11 yards. You have to find the cage. Yeah, got to hit the cage. You don't get that every trip down. No, and... Titans with their 12th shot on goal compared to eight for the Colonials. Luke Majic with it. He's got one on the day. I'm with you, Paige. Little bouncer backside. Fires. Did not get through. Another block. It's going to come all the way out to midfield. 
but that's also a tip pass on the ground. He's got to pick up and yeah, come back up. If that's a straight yeah. ball down, oh, nice play on the ground. Picked up by Robert Morris. Looking to go. Ball down, cause turnover, nice job. Noah Martin with another ground ball. Feeds Majek, and we got numbers here if they hustle. Majek feeds, backside, got it, and a goal. Nice transition, goal. Hello, but on cue, coach. Unsettled goal. Number nine. And that pass could have come earlier. Yep. Yeah, that pass could have come a couple of steps quicker. To left. Bernie's not going to miss many of those. To Majek to Bernie, and a, and a good defense. I mean, it was a good stop. You know, the, the Robert Morris had the ground ball. Noah Martin scooped it up, it, uh, hit by somebody. I couldn't see who that was, but that led to the break. Unsettled, as you mentioned, and the Titans find themselves leading 4-3. to three. Yeah. Said, was that defenseman was the, low, the low guy on the left side. Yep. Aiden Bishop got his second on the day. Bishop to Rook 4 to lead the Titans to a 4-3 lead. Not on, the Titans are down on the faceoffs. You mentioned the ground balls, but also n nothing clean. You know, we saw that a couple times last week where, you know, Utah just won it off and it was a, it was a, it was a break right out of the gate. Well, I'm a believer that if you play X amount of games, so if you take a college schedule, you play 16, you're going to play I think believe that you're going to play 14 about the same the way you play. Yep. You're going to play one great game and you're going to play one really bad game. You hope that the bad game is against a lesser opponent because you don't want to have a bad game against a team that can beat you on a normal night. Right. Maybe Detroit game they've got at this point, and it turns out that Robert Morris says still on the bus. Yeah. Yeah. And Titans led uh, Marquette at halftime. That was, uh, I think, their only lead at the half of the season. Another turnover by Robert Morris, and that's going to lead the break. Beacom's got it. He's going to slow it up. If your assistant coach looks at you on the bus and says, oh, that after the third game, that's the best game we've played all season, yeah. it could be a long. Grauman out there, number 28 for the Titans. Hat trick last week. Turnovers now creeping up there for Robert Morris. That's number eight of the half for the Colonials. Now they're protecting on the crease, but you see how they got like a triangle inside? Yep. Is that a is that a box and two? It looks like it. See how they rotate out? Yep. That is a zone. Yep. Long range. Randall saw that one all the way. That was a little too deep. We got a whistle. That's a unique zone. I don't. Page, go to the tent for me. We got to get a penalty. Page, go to the tent for me. Page. <laughs> Could have a man up opportunity Page, here for the Titans. It would appear to be that way. Hold it right there. Hold it right there, Page. So man up opportunity here, I believe, for the Titans. How to? All right, back on the deck. Penalty. I was trying to figure out who the penalty was on. Rowan Hines for Robert Morris will go into the box. And so the Titans with an opportunity here to take another two-goal lead. Ten for 33 on the season and the man up coming in at a smidge over 30%. Randall, good save there. Went down and got that one. Maybe a little too quick there, Coach, on the... Um, that's... Still with you, Paige. Yeah, exactly. that's a really interesting question. You good turn over again. Another good ride. You don't want to lose the ball quick in, in a man up. Yeah. But <coughs> there's always going to be one. Here we go. One Titans night. come away with it. Here we go. One more. One more. Got it. Oh, hit the goaltender. Good save by... Nate Randall, we're going to get a loose ball push with possession on Robert Morris. Yeah, that was a big time we always try to say that if it's a 30-second penalty, you want to be able to shoot the ball after that 15-second mark, unless it's wide open. Yep, it drops down. Yeah, exactly. And for a minute penalty, maybe you, you try to work to 30 seconds. Ivan Pronger had an opportunity to pick up his second on the day. Point blank. Nate Randall said no, no. Page, Great ahead. save by Nate Randall on that one. With you, Number four on the day for Randall. Oh, all right. But the Titans are going to remain man up here. Why are we and we're going to get another timeout. Time wow. Believe it's Maybe probably going to be Robert Morris on that one. Break. All right, so we're, we got some great action going on here. Titans lead Robert Morris 4 3. Ten minutes remaining. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back for the man up for the Titans here in the city of Detroit. 
My workouts, they're quick and intense. It kind of fits my personality, but at 19, I developed a bulging disc and I had to stop everything. And then I tried team rehab. Christina was pretty dejected the first time she came here. I designed a program that would keep her motivated. So we mimicked her workout, made it fun for her. Yeah, that was really smart of him. I'm really proud of the progress she's made. She's back to lifting, she's getting stronger. Team works. Team rehabilitation. Visit team rehab. Can a business education infused with social responsibility achieve national prominence? Ours does. For 100 years, Detroit Mercy's College of Business Administration has prepared leaders with competence, compassion, and conscience in the Jesuit and Mercy traditions. And our management program has been ranked among the nation's top 20 by U.S. News & World Report for three consecutive years. Find out more at business.udmercy.edu. And we're back. Zach, Titan Field here, campus of the University of Detroit Mercy. A Sun action, 4 3. Titans lead the Colonials. And really a spirited effort so far by the Titans. I think yeah, the only other game that we've seen this out of them was that, that first half against Marquette where they led at halftime. Good second half against High Point. Yep, a good, good second half against High Point. So, yeah, they just haven't put it together. We've got a man up here for the Titans. Then a loose ball push with possession. See if they can take advantage of it and get back to that two-goal lead. They started this one with two quick ones and led 2 nothing. Robert Morris has battled back, but the Titans look to jump back on top by two. John, I don't think we've seen the Robert Morris team that uh, we know is there. No, we have not. But, you know, you got to give the Titans credit. I mean, they've been, they've been scrappy for sure, uh, causing a lot of turnovers, long range. It's going to go high and wide. On the man up, I didn't realize that. Uh, yep, yep. So we've had two uh, two man ups here. This is the second one for the Titans. Majek's got it. Feeds inside. That one got through. That's going to be a turnover for the Titans. You can't throw a feed past somebody's feet. Yeah, really, it's a tough one. Two yards outside, two, you know, two yards outside the crease. Yeah, it's a tough one to catch. You teach him to keep the stick up on the shoulder, and it's a Lou Whitaker that, uh, short hop. It's those it's those mistakes that you really got to yeah. clean up. It's 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 the, the the timely mistakes again on a man up with a chance to take a two goal lead, and now Robert Morris got the opportunity here with nine minutes remaining to knot this one up at four. Titans going back to that one three two. Yep. With Noah Martin up top, too. He is uh, kind of the Tasmanian devil type player up there. Well, one of the things you can do with the two guys down low is you can spread them up a little bit. Backside guy stays home, so you don't get the wraparounds, which is what Utah did pretty much all Saturday. Yeah, backside with Jordan Hyde. There's the turnover. Ball coming out. That's going to lead to a break here for the Titans. As Beckham's got it. Looks, goes back. Could not handle it. Shot before he had it. And so a good opportunity lost for the Titans, and now Robert Morris is going to turn back and burn the other way. That ball came up the field pretty quick. Yep. And you notice they didn't run it up? They passed it up? <laughs> the ball moves faster than the man, Coach. <laughs> That's tight. That's going to be fired wide. But that's a little too close for comfort there, I think. Especially for Taggart Clark, leading scorer for Robert Morris, and he's got two on the day. Fires, good save there, Hemi. Exactly. Bounce shot. Bit. Didn't try that yet today. Little bouncer, and Hemi got a piece of it, knocked it aside. Save number three for Jacob Hemi. For the Colonials. Not going to go. We got another flag on the play. So the Titans are going to pick a little delayed penalty here for the Titans as someone got a little rambunctious with Mr. Jacob Hemi. Paige, go to the tent for me. Bernie with it. Bernie fires high, and that'll be. Page. Penalty. This will be number three for the Titans to go man up. Mr. Hemi also has to. Backwards. Yeah. So obviously the attack is pushing him from behind, but if you got to throw it backwards, your goalie's way too far out of the net. I can see the referee come over and get the penalty and see who it is. Yep. 
with the penalty taker, Clark. Read some history on, on Robert Morris. He was an interesting guy. Oh, yeah. That it was not part of my research, Coach, but I would like to know more about Robert Morris. Financed the whole Revolutionary War. No. Financed the whole Revolutionary you War. Did. Interesting. <laughs> I fancy myself a history buff, and I did not know that. I'm a very forgotten man. So Titans 0 for 3 on the man up here, looking to try and strike gold with this one. As their leading scorer, Mr. Tagger Clark, is in the box for taking some liberties with Mr. Hemi. Backside's open. Wind, rain, subsiding a little bit. Ooh, post. You got a piece and a post. Good ground ball there. Now you're at how long do you wait? Just take a shot. That's a that was a good execution. Yeah, that was. And a good look too. Long pass up in the air. Turnover, good catch there. As Bernie's got it. Bernie faces a double, spins it back to the middle. Majek up top, he's got one. And the assist on Bernie. And Titans will just wait. Make some changes. And more methodical offense here. Seven goals deep into the second period. I think we were at seven goals. Deep into the first three minutes last week. And, and and the Titans don't have the team. I mean, they don't have the team to, to uh, you know, run and gun and, and try and keep up with teams. I mean, they need to be methodical. They need to be very specific. And they need to run their offense and get good shots. Well, you got to wonder a little bit, too, is if Robert Morris is taking them, you know, slight. Yeah. A lot slighter than they might typically if this was a team that was 3-3. Three and three. Yep. Taking their time, using the clock. A little inside roll, a little bouncer. It's going to get by. Not on cage, shot clock at 18. I want to be critical, but when you roll inside and the pressure's on your backside, go towards the net, don't yeah, keep pushing falling back. backwards, yeah. You're falling backwards, trying to shoot forward. Yeah, the fall away jumper does not work in lacrosse. Ivan Pronger's got one on the day. There's a go, ooh, he had it, he had it, fires, got it, look at that, kept his balance. Shook it off, and the Magic Man finds the back of the net, and the Titans get back to a two-goal lead. Follow him in there. Luke Majek. Yeah. Kept his balance and just turned and fired, and he's going to beat Mr. Nate Randall, and now the Titans right there, just stay right there. reclaim that two-goal lead. You wonder how much of this rain is ice? Not ice, but sort of that sleet. And that sleet, could that make that surface? We had kids falling oh, all slick. over the place. They're going to be really slick out there. 100%. Zach, what's the time on the scoreboard? Cold as ice. Willing to sacrifice. Face-offs now. She broadcasts an iambic metameter. <laughs> Seven of nine wins for Robert Morris. They're going to win that one, too. That'll make it eight for ten. I don't want to say the face-off will always continue, but it hasn't been as... You know, apparent. Right? I mean, you you, know, you, can, you can lose faceoffs, and he can lose faceoffs in a way that that changes the game, where it really makes a difference. I think the faceoffs, while they've lost, uh, you know, eight of ten, hasn't been a huge difference maker. I still don't believe you've seen the Robert Morris team that we will eventually see in this field. Coach. Yeah, we may not see him today, Coach. And I don't That's think good. I don't think Coach Colin wants to see him. No. Nor do the Titan fans out there all across America and really the globe. Because, you know, we're on YouTube now, and so anybody out there can be listening to us. I think all seven of our, you know, viewers, I think they're enjoying the, the broadcast. Well, you know, we're very big in the Netherlands, I hear, Coach. There we go. You're good now. 4.32 remaining in this one. 5-3 in the first half. Another turnover there. Good defense by the Titans. See, that the one-handed, it's, it's like they don't seem to be grinding. You know, nope, no, that's a one hand lift. Joey Schmaltz out there working hard. Double digits the last five games, and you're looking at it. He's got three games into the second quarter. So yeah. you got to wonder what's. Got an offside on the, on the Titans as they just lazily stepped over. That's going to be a problem. We got a flag on the play as well, and then we're going to get a goal by Robert Morris inside fast break. That got a little chaotic for the Titans. That's the Robert Morris team I think we're going to start seeing. 
Got a little chaotic there for the Titans. We had the offsides and then the quick restart. But that's a, a real And Liam Keane, I believe, got that one. I didn't see who scored that. I think it was Liam Keane, 34. Buffalo, New York native. A lot of East Coast kids on Robert Morris's team, coach. Canada, yep, got some kids at uh, Everest Academy. So kind of an important face off here, I think, for the Titans. Five, four, three minutes left in the half. We'd love to go into the half with one goal. We're going to get a loose ball push on the Titans, unfortunately. Page goal. Logan Flattery. Flattery. Now, yeah, better the tent because it's going to be a flag there. Caught him from behind, and he went down. And so now Robert Morris is going to go man up here. So we go back to mistakes. Make a mistake on a pass on the last one they scored. Now you're man up. Well, yeah, and he had the offsides. I mean, so you can even take it back a little bit further. You know, they had the ball. Yep, flattery with the loose ball push. So we're going to 30 yeah, seconds. Man up for Robert Morris with a chance to tie this up. But, yeah. you know, there was a turnover by Robert Morris. Titans had it. They offside. Quick restart. Unsettled goal. And now you got this. If you're an offensive player, you love to place from time to time in the rain because it bags out your stick a little bit more. And it gives you a little more pocket durability to be able to. A little more hold, yep. Hide, hide those balls. And First man up opportunity for Robert Morris. See if the Titans can hold him down here. Coming in at 46% on the man up. Pretty efficient. 11 of 24 on the season. Titans on the other hand. Not bad on the man on the man down, 11th eleventh for thirty-three. The proximity of defenders though around the crease in front of the crease is far greater than it was on Saturday. Yeah. Fires that did not get through. See Alex one second. I want to get I want to You never play a defense outside in, and I know that's a mm -hmm. you know, kind of a silly statement yeah. to make, but <laughs> I think we got lost. The Titans got lost on Saturday a little bit. Yeah. And being spread, and if you look at now they're playing Yeah, they were chasing chasing a lot. Yeah. And there is Taggart Clark setting his feet. Very silky smooth release. And he'll find the back of the net there. Man up goal for Robert Morris. And they'll knot this one up at five. And there wasn't anything. That was just hard fire. That was just rock hard. It was very smooth. Yes. It was very smooth. Yep, just a slow roll back to the center there. So that's the, especially that's that's just high to high. And he hits the corner on a, on a strong side goalie. That's why you see a guy like that drafted in the NL, NLL. Yep, we got it. Thank you. Oh, that was Burr? Is that Burr on that side? That was Burr on that side. I take that one back. Yeah, it was smooth. Silky smooth. Remind me a little bit of Ernie Ells' golf swing. The big easy. Sam Sneed. Oh, yeah. Now you're even going farther back. I was back already. Then you took us farther back. Dow Fistrol. <laughs> now you're going obscure. <laughs> 2.36 remaining here in the half. We got ourselves knotted up. We got a good one. We got a good one. You know the name Dow Fistrol? I do know the name, yes, but not enough to speak to it intelligently. He won at Oakland Hills. Yes. That's been a while. Yeah. He was the uh, Harry Varden of his time. Yes. Luke Majix with it. He's got one. Ah, Aaron pass there. Got up in the air. Now we got to be careful here if you're the Titans as Robert Morris is breaking out, looking to pick up their first lead of the game. Inside trouble. Ooh. Hemi got a piece of that one and just kicked it aside because unsettled situation on the break led to a good opportunity for Robert Morris. Oh, another one got by. So you can see the intensity picking up offensively here for Robert Morris. And I think Coach McDonald is probably saying, listen, the, 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 enough of this. Let's go. And we're going to get a timeout here. Coach Cohen is going to call a timeout here with 157 remaining here in the half. We're all not, not five. We're going to stay here, take a look at some of the statistics. Oh. Nope. Oh, yeah, let's look at some of the stats here. Shots on goal. We got uh, Titans leading 22-16. In terms of shots, both teams, shots on goal, 9-9. Nine, nine. Ground balls, Titans lead that 17-9. We got saves, both 4-4 four and four for Hemi and Randall. 
clears. Titans perfect at 10 for 10, where Robert Morris, 7 for 9. Faceoffs troubling the Titans as has been this season, 9 for 12 in favor of Robert Morris. And the turnovers, 12 for Robert Morris and 9 for the Titans. So balance stats equal the score, 5 to 5. Yeah. So if you're in the game statistically, you may be in the game on the scoreboard. Yeah, we got eight eight cause turnovers by the Titans compared to two to Robert Morris as well, which is one of the things Coach Colin mentioned about rides. You know, we really got to get rides and we got to get more opportunities. Taking a look at the A Sun scoreboard, give us an update there. We got Linwood and Queens knotted at four with 4:14 remaining in the second. Check out Mercer and Bellarmine. We got 4:34 remaining. That we got a close one, 13:11 in that one. So we got a couple of good games on A Sun Wednesday, as I have eloquently nicknamed it. Just about Are you going to copyright that? I'm thinking about it. You know, it's kind of like that uh, the Mac action football, the Tuesdays. All right. All right, coming out of the timeout, Coach Colin wanted to dial up some defense here to, to shun Robert Morris here as this one is knotted up at five. You'd hate to work so hard this entire half and have such good success for the Titans and walk out of here down six, five and a half, Coach. But three mistakes have led to three goals. Yeah, true. Two goals. Exactly. Actually, the third goal was also on a turnover. Yep. It's like the T-shirt down that says, everything is my fault, coach. And that's what happens. Mistakes happen. 120 left in this one. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Burr picked up the last one. I had said that it was Taggart. But he's got two on the day. Good defense inside. Keeping him out. Trying to get those hands free. Good defense there. Nice defense. Why would you shoot the ball in that situation unless it's the end of the time clock and there was about 14 left on the shot clock? Sean Hinge with that one. Good hold, defense. Do you hold for last shot? I think so. I, I think at a minimum you got to walk out of here with a tie. You know, at least at least 5-5. Five, five. I mean, the, the, the kids have worked extremely hard. Good half. And I think it's going to be a either way. You only got 30 seconds left here. Craig McDonald must have great uh, respect for his defense because I've never seen defense from guys quite as far out. And, 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 and they're pushing, and they're pushing even farther. So here's Luke Majek with it. He's got today, he's got a shorty, another little slippage. Ball stickers. That's going to go wide. Far, you got to be up the field. David Beacon with up. it. He's going to feed inside. Oh, BTB. Good catch on the inside as Grawlman had it when BTB, but we're going to end up 5-5 at the half here. Titans, Colonials knotted at five. And at the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, what else could you expect from the kids, Coach? I think I think Coach Colon's got to be pretty happy. I think the statement we started with was stats are pretty close. The, the score is pretty close. Yeah. You protect the normal things that you do. Obviously, you're not going to have great face-off protection, but now you're getting ground balls. You're, you're not getting the turnovers that you maybe have expected in terms of you know, the, the, the division between those two. Yeah, 8-2 and, and cause turnovers. And you got a 5-5 five, five game. Yeah, it's good. Very exciting here in the city of Detroit. We're going to take our halftime break, and we'll be back for the second half action here on the campus of the University of Detroit Mercy Titans. 5-5, five, five, a sun action. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. We all may be home but HAP is here working hard for you. That's right, Dr. Chinord. We're here answering your questions. I'm doing live online town halls with Steve. That's right. And we're here personally calling our Medicare and at-risk members to check in. And we're here making life easier with free prescription home delivery and early refills. Kimberly? We're waiving member costs for telehealth during this time for physical and mental health needs. But there's more. Margaret? Thanks, Kim. As a Michigan-based company, HAP is here for our neighbors. We're donating to food banks and supporting our community. Daryl? And if you've lost health coverage, give us a call, and we'll find you the right solution. I'm proud of the work we're doing. Let's be here for each other. To be Jesuit is to be more. 
to go deeper. Sharing a passion formed by academic rigor, classic performances, legendary character, made complete through service to others, and a faith that does justice. Jesuit basketball, mission, mind, and body, on the court and off. Here I am one year from college and I tear my ACL. They're telling me I'm not gonna be able to play college football and I'm thinking, that sucks. Team Rehab comes along and says, hey, let's get to work. They don't rely on routine programs. It was all about me and my dream to play again. Now I'm visiting Ivy League schools and oh yeah, I'll be playing. I could have given up. I'm glad I went to Team Rehab because they did it. Team works. Team Rehabilitation. Visit. Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. When it comes to Medicare, the big insurance providers promise to be there for you. But are they? In 2021 and beyond, HAP is here. When you need the experts, HAP is here. When you need a trusted advisor, HAP is here. When you need more value, HAP is here. We're here for Michigan like we've been here all along. Call and see how HAP is here for you. It's an unprecedented, uncertain time, but you are not alone. HAP is here, answering your questions about coronavirus, supporting your physical and mental health, helping navigate Michigan through this. Let's be here for each other. See how we can help at HAP.org. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN events and... Business education infused with social responsibility achieve national prominence? Ours does. For 100 years, Detroit Mercy's College of Business Administration has prepared leaders with competence, compassion, and conscience in the Jesuit and Mercy traditions. And our management program has been ranked among the nation's top 20 by U.S. News & World Report for three consecutive years. Find out more at business.udmercy.edu. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. We all may be home, but HAP is here working hard for you. That's right, Dr. Chenord. We're here answering your questions. I'm doing live online town halls with Steve. That's right. And we're here personally calling our Medicare and at-risk members to check in. Because every athlete deserves to be treated like a pro. Henry Ford Sports Medicine. In this socially distanced world, what we all need right now is more connection. To feel we're part of something bigger than ourselves. A community. As a local company, HAP is your neighbor. We're connected to this community. HAP is here, connecting you to all you could want in a health plan. 
TAP is connected with thousands of doctors and health systems across the state, which means most likely all your doctors are in our network. And we're constantly working with doctors to find innovative ways to deliver the best care at the best value. HAP goes the extra mile for you, connecting you to 24-7 telehealth, free prescription delivery, wellness programs, member discounts, worldwide urgent and emergency care, and our award-winning customer service makes navigating your plan easier. Whoever you are, whatever you need, HAP is here with a variety of plans, and we can help you find the one that fits your unique needs. So let's connect. See how HAP is what makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit. The urban setting is, is really fantastic to be a part of, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. My education here isn't just academic. This school wants you to be the best you that you can be. All aspects of the things that I do here have participated in giving back. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Here I am one year from college and I tear my ACL. They're telling me I'm not going to be able to play college football and I'm thinking, that sucks. Team Rehab comes along and says, hey, let's get to work. They don't rely on routine programs. It was all about me and my dream to play again. Now I'm visiting Ivy League schools and oh yeah, I'll be playing. I could have given up. I'm glad I went to Team Rehab because they didn't. Team works. Team Rehabilitation. Visit team rehab when it comes to Medicare, the big insurance providers promise to be there for you. But are they? In 2021 and beyond, HAP is here. When you need the experts, HAP is here. When you need a trusted advisor, HAP is here. When you need more value, HAP is here. We're here for Michigan like we've been here all along. Call and see how HAP is here for you. All right, we're back live. All right, Rossi. Fast and furious as we are back in action here. Titans, Colonials, 5-5, five, five, deadlocked here at the half. And a really good half for, for the for the Titans. Most definitely, we look at the stats, they outshot Robert Morris 24-17. Clears perfect 11 for 11 for Coach Colon and the Titans. 
caused turnovers eight for the Titans. And so I think, you know, it's that, it's that gritty mentality. It's that fight that Coach Colin was looking for, and, and they're having success doing it, Coach. I think the first four minutes of this half will tell what happens at the end. If you're in the game, next four or five minutes, you're in the game. I think if the bottom drops out, and there's a good save. Good save there by Jacob Hemme. That'll be number five on the day and a good outlet and a good clear. Titans now 12 for 12 on clears. And looking to unlock this 5-5 five -five tie. I ducked out there at halftime, and it is chilly. It is chilly and windy. Coach, how was your walk? It was fine. I think one of the things they've got to do, though, uh, second half, is they've got to use most of that shot clock. Yeah, that methodical, take your time, use the clock. Good backside, he's got room. You can use a little more shot clock, and it obviously reduces their opportunities. Titans led in the first half. Aiden Bishop had two. Luke Majek had two as well. Fires backside, got it. That's going to go wide. One more step there as Bishop was looking to pick up a hat trick. When you've played this well to this point, if you get into a running game with them, I think you're going to find out this. You're going to be on the losing end of that one. Yep. Some new faces in the lineup for the Titans making a difference. We saw a good assist early on there by Harry Skinner. Five seconds on the shot clock. This one's ticking down. Drop it in the corner and let it go. And that's what the Titans will do. So they use that shot clock just like you said, Coach. Which, you know, you, you know, even if you don't, you know, get a goal there, hey, throw, throw it in the corner, make them, make them run the whole length. John, it's 75 seconds more that they can't score. Yep. If we're, if we're looking strategy, you'd rather, you know, you'd rather do that than, than take a quick shot, lose the ball, and down they come. Yeah, quick turnover. We saw that against Utah where they took advantage of it. Another save by Hemi. Saw that one all the way. Another good outlet, and here comes the Titans. Now, the two Almost shots that Robert you. Morris has taken at this point are almost frustration shots. Yeah. Like, you know, Keeping them on the outside. Stay in the game the third quarter. There's going to be a good, you know, be a good game fourth quarter. Keeping them on the outside, which is what they're looking to do. And I still believe Jackson Ewald with a good clear. I don't believe we've seen – I still say the same thing. We haven't seen Robert Morris play the way they can play. The number 88, Jackson Ewald there. Detroit Catholic Central graduate, Wixom, Michigan. Right, number of Catholic Central – Kids on the Titans, Aiden Bishop being one of them, Jacob Hemi in goal, Bernie. Almost think they should change their helmets to blue sometimes, Coach. There's an old Catholic League coach. I got no comment. No comment. No comment there from Coach Greg. So another good possession here. Titans taking their time, 25 on the shot clock. Fires, good save there. Nate Randall, another Catholic League product with a good save. And it'll be number five for Nate the Great. John, I know you're a little Catholic League eccentric, but Real Madrid is a lot of public school kids on these teams. Too. I know. I, I did. I'm not saying that they're not. I said Harry Skinner from Clarkston. What are you talking about? I talked about him twice. I understand. Out to you, Alex. Alex, I'm with you. So Robert Morris here, second offensive possession of the second half. Knotted at five. Titans jumped out early, 2 nothing. Robert Morris fought back, but have never led in this one. The one three, two again has hurt Robert Morris. Yeah. And it, like you talked about last week, you know, they, they kind of went to, they, they went zone. There's an errant turnover there. And so, you know, they went to zone last week, and, and you had commented that, you know, maybe they hadn't practiced it so much, and it kind of showed. And I think, you know, a couple of days of practice now and looking what they're doing, and I think you see a difference. Well, they're running a zero against a 1-3-2, so you got nobody on the crease to pull the center guy. Put a couple guys on the crease, and it opens up the shooters on the outside. Yeah. Because the inside guy, the, the down two guys are going to have to cover the, the inside guys, especially the back seven. Kyle Loken, number 33, leads that clear. We ran that defense for years um, when I was in public schools. And it's a hard defense to go against because you don't know where the, where the shot's going to come from. Yep. And if you face the ball in the wing, every time you look down, you're looking through three guys. David Beacom, number 14. 
You got Harry Skinner out there. I can tell you in the last decade that one through two that we ran at St. Mary's against Brother Rice. Brother Rice would make the skip pass and they also throw the ball out of bounds because they weren't used to seeing that defense. Yeah. It definitely works. And got it. There we go. Good uh, cut on the inside. Yeah. Bang, bang play. As David Beacom puts the net. Patient. Ball in the back of the net. Patient Five offense. There. Yeah, well, no question about it. And that was great. And, and again, using the entire shot clock, Rossi now. making them play defense, and a great cut. Titans reclaim the lead, 6-5 here. 44 degrees in my car on the um, temperature, but it's definitely not 44 degrees. My watch is 35. Oh. Number two on the year for David Beckham. Another turnover. Beckham. Another turnover by Robert Morris. Starting to rack up the turnovers now as we sit at 13 turnovers. Not what Coach Craig McDonald was looking for coming in here today. Look how far they're picking these guys up. We said that earlier in the first half. Good stick check. Unsettled, John. Here we go. That's what we're looking for. A lot of low bouncer. You mentioned the, the kind of the, the yeah. pass at your feet. There's somebody. Room. Oh, that's going to be just wide. A lot of low passes come from guys who, not necessarily not skilled, but they're playing at a higher level. And it's that extra step of taking the brunt of the hit to make the pass come through. Yep. And the guys aren't coming back to the ball. That's the yeah, you got to go to the ball, to the ball, to the ball, to the ball. Exactly. Luke running into traffic. Fires low. That doesn't get through. Going to trickle off to the side there. So Luke's got two on the day. He was looking to pick up number three. 17 seconds on the shot clock here. Back behind at X. One more. In, in, got it. There we go again. That defense again you talked about kind of jumping all over. And there's Kisnick. He picks up his first of the day. And he continues his hot streak. Coming off back-to-back -back hat tricks. And gets back on the scoreboard again tonight. Number 11 on the year. He's number two goal scorer for the Titans. Madison, Wisconsin. Good patience, good ball movement. Yeah. Got the defense moving. Oh. He, that, that aggressive defense, you can see him charge out at him. And Drew just made him, made him miss and found the back of the net. And now the Titans regain that two-goal lead. 8-14 remaining here in the third. Two. Rossi now. Ground ball to Robert Morris. Another win at the faceoff there. As Steven Delmonica has done a real good job. He's going to carry it and look to get it to somebody. You, As, hope, you hope the one through 2 and they stay in it, you hope that it continues to frustrate them because what's happened is that Robert Morris is, is basically shooting quicker than they would normally shoot. Yeah, because they're open and it's, it's from distance and they think they've got something. But, you know, Hemi, Hemi's good goal. Hemi's goal, goal. He sure is. Yards. He sure is. I mean, even in the game against Utah, he's, I mean, a lot of those goals, I mean, Jordan Jordan Hyde had five, and I think there was no one within five yards of him on most of them. But now we're back to man, okay? Yeah, change it up. Well, and I get that, but... You know, coach's decision. Keep him, keep no, him no, guessing, no. And, 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 it, and it may work, it may not. We'll see. Every coach has different philosophies. Yep. It just happens to be if something's working, don't change it. Hemi got a piece of that one. That one will go wide. 21 seconds left. There's an 11-yard shot. They haven't had an 11-yard shot this half. True. The argument becomes, though, that maybe you were smart enough at the college level to make a quick adjustment to the 1-3-2. Oh, good save, Hemi, there. Burr got free. Tried to catch Hemi snoozing, but uh, no, that Hemi has not been asleep in, in weeks with all the shots he's been seeing. One of the things you also notice with goaltenders now is goaltenders look like look like shortstops on short hop balls. Yep. Used to be these big sweeps across their body to protect it, put the stick in front of their feet. But now they're finding out that if you just take the stick straight down, it's so much quicker than to do that 
that sort of fan motion that they use. Here it goes. Fire is a good save there. Same thing. Same thing there as Nate Randall went down and picked it up. There's a good outlet. They're going to get through. Story. It's, not, it's only good outlet if he gets it. Yep. <laughs> Up to you, Alex, right now. Back to Randall. Randall's family in the stands. Nice ball movement there. Nate's dad, Jason Randall. Know him very well. Tori, his mom. The other thing, this is an older team as we have discussed with UAD being a younger team. Yeah. So I don't think you're going to see these guys panic. I think it's just a matter of they've been in some close games. They've been in a number of close games. Yep. Still with you, Alex. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you look at that uh, A-Sun championship, another unforced turnover well, up and over. It also shows that the Utah game might have been sort of that anomaly that there's no way, and if they played, you know, next week, that it's a, you know, a 24 goal. Yeah, it just got out of hand. It got out yeah. of hand last week. Where's the help? Help, help. Oh, good look, but didn't get through. Good play by Hemi. He tipped it away. And the Titans are going to look to clear here. So speeding up to the five-minute mark here left in the third. Titans with the only goals in the second half. They got two. Noah Martin with it. He's wheeling to the front court, and there we go. Jackson Ewald with it, number 88. Gets it back behind the Bishop. And the Titans with an opportunity here to go up by three, which they have not done all game. If you watch Noel Martin bring up the ball, uh, ball he's a New York guy. Yep. You, you notice it's it's the middle of the stick, and he's yeah. almost like he's in a hunch position. That's something you'll see a lot of LSMs used in Central New York and in Long Island. It's just a different way of bringing the ball up. Yep. We got a flag down, too. So we got a delayed penalty here on Robert Morris. So the Titans with a delayed penalty opportunity. There's going to be a penalty here, so the ball goes out of bounds. Alex, go to the 10 for me. Back to you, Evan. Here's Bernie with it. Bernie taking a whacking. Still with you, Alex. Elliot Holden, number 31. We're going to get a push there. Go to the 10th to me, Alex. You know, the other, Crease. If you use the Utah as an anomaly, the other thing you can think about is that maybe this right league there, is yeah. from top right to bottom isn't right as far away from each other as you might think. Right there. This is a great performance by UAD. 100%. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, you, you look at it on paper, especially everything that's going on this season, and you look at this game and you say mismatch again. And, you know, it, w it wasn't something of being fearful coming in here and broadcasting it, but you, you, don't, you don't know what you're going to get. But a 7-5 game, this is not trickery. They're nope. just, again, go back to stats, go back to opportunity. They're playing the kind of game you, you would want them to play on, a, on an everyday basis. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they're doing, they're executing what I what I assume that yeah. Coach Colin put out there and, and the coaching staff. You know, Brett Oskin, the offensive coordinator. You know, and I think he's trying to find his way, too. You and I mentioned that at the opening. You know, he's, he's he was playing last year, right? I mean, he was, a, you know, he, he was, his playing days were still going on, and now he's the offensive coordinator. And so I think he's he's working his way through this as well. So man-up opportunity for the Titans here, leading 7-5. Look there. Fire's got it. And there we go. Just stay with number eight again. upset, dude. They are making their way. Drew Kisnick with the second of the quarter. And now the Titans take their first three-goal lead, not only of the game, but, but of the season. One of the paradigms you always ask, the guy says, well, he was a great player. Oh, my God, he was a great player. But can he coach? Mm -hmm. Different, completely different set of circumstances. Completely different mindset. So man up opportunity, Titans take advantage of it and take a three goal lead here with 340 as the sleet slash snow begins to fall again sideways here on Titan Field. Interesting that the Robert Morris guy jumps to the offensive side of the ball in a face off. Must have great confidence in his face Yeah, I think okay. they, they're looking to go, yep. Live stats went down. That'll be a win for Robert Morris. They've dominated at the X, but it hasn't been as monumental as we've seen in a number of games this year with the Titans where it's just been a pick up and go and leading a fast break. 
So I don't want to say it's, you know, it's getting a little uh, squeamish time for the Colonials at this point. Still a lot of time on the clock in the fourth quarter coming forward. But, you know, three-goal lead here, three minutes left uh, in the third. You know, the, the offense has really been, um, you know, stagnant here in the third quarter with, with not many opportunities, longer shots outside than him. He has easily turned away. Well, defensively, they've done a really good job of... There's the Noah initial, Martin. The initial check of staying with the guy. Yep. They're not getting beat the way they got beat at Utah. The Utah guys were turning the corner, and these guys are, are initially staying pretty well. Now... What are we going to get here? There's a good double coming forward there. Noah Martin knocked it out. Ball was down. And now we've got a discussion about whose ball it is in the corner. It's going to stay here with Robert Morris. 2.32 remaining. Shot clock reset as Hammy kicked that one away. You notice they put two guys inside too, like we talked about? Yep. They're back to the 1-3-2, and they got some guys inside. Yeah, they're making the adjustments. Now you got to cover, and it leaves the top guy open. Right. They're placating the old stand. It was a guy who keeps setting picks inside, so somebody gets open. Here comes the screen. Backside should be wide open if he moves. And there it is. There's a good take. That's that was textbook. They, they put the two guys inside. They yep. made the adjustment, and then yep. all of a sudden. Never mind. It was my computer. Yeah, that was textbook right there. A little tic tac toe, a little two man game on that side, and, and a good look and a good shot as Robert Morris answers the run of the Titans and chop it back to a two goal lead. All right. I'll give you a nickel you know? bet that we come out of the one three two and go back to the man. Colton Lindstone picked up that one. That's his fourth on the season. Assist from David Burr. And that's what the doctor ordered for Robert Morris. They really needed that one. Yeah. So face off again it goes to the Colonials. So let's see if they go back into the one three two with the adjustment that they made, that Robert Morris made. More Morris. Robert yeah, Robert Morris. Robert Morris. I think <laughs> he financed the whole Confederate uh, <laughs> army or something. No. Revolutionary. Oh yes, Re okay, got it. Got it. Confederate Army was copy. Well, okay. Yeah. And there's another one. Two. And there's so. two in a row. And really same side, almost the same set that they ran. Alex and with Although in that case that's an unsettled. Yeah. Right? That's not that wasn't off an offense. Right. So. He beats the corner, so where's the guy coming up to slide to pick that up? Number nine. Number nine, Ben Starkey, gets his seventh on the day. And so now we got a game of runs going here as the Titans picked up two, picked up three, and then Robert Morris answers with two with 141 remaining here in the third. Faceoffs now. All right, Ross, I'm with you. Shoot. Still tilting towards Robert Morris as Steven Delmonica has done a really good job, number 24 for Robert Morris at the X. Robert Morris ball. Sorry, what? You're cutting out on me. You're cutting out on me. And so now with an opportunity here to tie this one up as we speed our way through the third quarter. Okay, you better. 5-5 five, five tie at the half. They're also back in man. Now the Titans making an adjustment. A little bit of a chess match out there, would you say, Coach? Yeah, well, you're... You're making adjustments based on what's happening. adjustment. you got to come back with something right. different. Yep. Right, you haven't seen the 3-3 three, three today. I mean, zones are designed... There's There would be some argument. John Paul ran zone a little bit at, at the Michigan in the old club days. Yep. Zones typically are built to play against better better teams. Got about a two-second differential in the shot clock and the third quarter game clock. Ball down there, good defense. Alex. Ball's going to remain backside. Hemi got a piece of that one. You, Alex. Little quick stick action down there. Two Robert Morris players to one. Good play there and a good pickup, and the Titans will look to clear. You got to go. Good ground ball there by number 21, Joey Schmaltz. Nine seconds, ticking away. Titans content. Let's see if they can get up a shot here as Luke Majek's got it. He's going to fire from long range. Oh, Randall with a good save. 
as that was some heat from Majak. You can live with that shot with three seconds yeah. on a clock. Oh, for sure. I, I for sure. It was a good move, and he got a good look at it. That's what you wanted. So the end of the third, we had a good one going. 8-7 Titans over the Colonials here. Could we be looking towards an upset and really U of D's first win of the season, Coach? I'm not going to jinx it, but I hope we get that going. And we're going to take a quick break here as we're going to rest up and get you back to the action. Start the fourth quarter coming up here at the University of Detroit. And we're going to take a quick break. Detroit Mercy itself definitely values who you are as a person to really give me guidance on what it was to be a college student. The ability to connect with many people from different backgrounds. Not only did I take what I learned in the academic world, but I was able to apply that in a professional setting. And the university definitely provided those resources, and I was able to graduate and be the first one of my family to graduate from college. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. And we're back on the campus of the University of Detroit Mercy. Today's A-Sun action speeding as we head to the fourth quarter here. We got a good one, folks. Titans 8, Robert Moore's Colonials 7. And I got to tell you, it's been very, very exciting and a great game and a great game plan so far for Coach Colin and the Titans. They've done everything you've asked them to do. They've played the kind of defense. They've only made a few mistakes. We were talking in the break, John, about maybe this being an upset. And, you know, it's interesting watching Utah and then bringing what we're trying to accomplish uh, to the process here. It, I don't know. I don't know this. It, on, just, on, let's say on just, paper. On paper, I think absolutely. it's an upset. On paper. Anybody looking at this, they're cruising their computer, they're looking at this game going, and they're looking at Utah last week, and they're going, you know, this, this could be ugly for U of D again, and it's not. And, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited to see what happens in the fourth. But if you look at the cross, the top 25, even in, in across, everybody's being upset. Yeah. Everybody's – I don't know that there's – there's a lot more parity than you think there is. I think – I would agree with you. And, it's, you know, it, it, it's hard at the beginning of the year. You know, the, the talent is going to prevail – early in the year, but once teams start to, to, to bond a little bit and you get that, uh, you know, really cohesiveness offensively and defensively, you know, you're going to see a difference between the beginning of the year and the end of the year. But if I, and I'm not a gambling man, but if I had $5, I would put it on the visitors at this point. Again, you, I don't think you've seen the team, and maybe we've just seen a great yeah. program from, you know, University of Detroit. Chris has pushed all the right buttons, you know, defensively. The flag on us. Yep, you scored just enough. But All right. we'll yep. see. And here's an opportunity right off the faceoff. We get a loose ball push on the Titans. And Robert Morris will go man up. Number 41 there. Taggart Clark is going to take it. Uh, we're going to get an interference call. It's actually the second penalty on the Titans faceoff man, Mr. Flattery. Get a loose ball push. Careful inside. Oh, Ooh, nice play there. Rushed. Good play and a clean hit. Don't hit them unless you can see their eyes. David Beckham, Beckham with it, with a good hit. There's a fire there. That's too close. Late on that slide over there. Man wide open and fires, finds the back of the net. And we are all knotted up again as Colton Lindstone gets his second of the day and fifth on the season. Hemi went to go the first time through that same play. We got crushed. Hemi went low to anticipate. And what did he do? He went top shelf. Yep. 
So that tells you a little bit about being a pretty smart player there. 8-8, eight, eight, all tied up here on Titan Field. Getting into that crunch time zone now. The players are going to start making plays. See who's going to walk out of here with a victory. Faceoffs now. 14 out of 19 victories here for Robert Morris at the X. John, I'm looking at all the coaches dressed like they're going to some kind of a ski event. I'm watching the players in shorts. Remember the old days when they used to wear the long football coats? Oh, yeah. Why don't they have those anymore? I don't some know. of these kids are freezing or never going to get on the field. Right, right. Buy something that would be, you know, like a stadium coat. Yep. And have them on the bench. I don't think would be uh, a bad idea. No, these guys I, would I, be. I, I would agree. I would agree. Grateful. And I got some old school coaches like, oh, you know, uh, tough it out. Right. It's lacrosse. But uh, let's be realistic here. So good win there for the Titans, and they needed it. Fire is going to go. Did not get through. Ooh, somebody's hurt. Somebody took a shot there. That ball, coldness on the leg. It's not pleasant. Give and go. There was a goal. Fires. Oh, nice Randall. Save. Now that was the save of the day for Nate Randall. Went down and got that one. You, Alex, Alex, I'm with As Kisnick was trying to pick up another one, and Randall made a great save. Big save in a big moment. Robert, Robert Morris now on the break. Firing. That one's going to go wide. The goalie is the most important position on the cross team. Zoom out a little bit. Do I think it is? Yeah. Oh, that's a very interesting yeah. question, and I'm going to pause on that one because I've never really thought about it, Coach. Goalie and long stick mid. Yeah. If they don't have those two, it's hard to compete. Zoom out. Can you win with an average goalie and strength everywhere else? I don't think you can. I don't think you can win consistently. Matt, Matt Duncan fired that one wide for Robert Morris. 8-8, eight, eight, 13 minutes remaining. I say that because easy goals, everybody gets let down. Yeah. Liam Keen, 34. He's got one on the day. But I think you look at, I think you're going to be looking at Taggart Clark wow. to take over or Burr. Race to the line. We're going to get there. Titan ball. So a good stop there by the Titans. I was thinking, too, the brand new programs, the first thing they do for scholarship when he's find themselves a good goaltender. You start that way and work your way out. So that was a good, good possession for the Titans. Playing, playing well, defensively. Yeah, they are. We were talking about the style with the stick a little farther down. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. The guys from New York play a little bit different long pole than the guys here in the Midwest. Yeah, and let, let's not forget, we got four players drafted in the first round of the NLL draft here out on the field for Robert Morris. And Titans are Titans are hanging with them. There we go. Oh, good bouncer and a good save. Randall reacted well. He went down and tried to skip over him, but he was he grabbed it there. And another good save by Nate Randall. That'll put Nate up to 10 saves on the day. A little mustard on that save. Oh, yep. No. There we go. That'll go wide. Right, Alex, you can do Shots on goal. 37 for the Titans, 27 for Robert Morris. Or just shots, sorry. Did you ever thought we turnover outshot the... Oh, that went high there. Titans will get the turnover and the clear. 37-28 shots on goal. 19 Titans, 16 Robert Morris. 11:30 remaining. All knotted up at eight. Crazy eights, coach. And a cold, blustery day here in the D. Hey, good game. Great game. That's all you can ask for. You know, you think about it. You look at the Titans scoring. You know, Bernie doesn't have any. I mean, Bernie hasn't scored today. Leading scorer for the Titans. And so Robert Morris has done a nice job putting the clamps on him. But we're also burning clock. Yep. Which is what we've been talking about throughout the first run, half. Run, run the, the clock out. Play the defense you need to play. Yeah, you talked about the four corners going all the way back to Dean Smith days uh, last week uh, in the Utah game. Put down one, see if it changed it, because yours brightened up. Nope, I actually go the other way. 25 left oh, on the on. shot clock, so they burned, you know, 40 seconds right there, Coach. Fires, that'll go wide. You watch the college basketball playoffs, and you can see all of the, you know, 48 seconds left on the clock. Everybody's got two timeouts, takes 45 minutes to play. Oh, yeah, yep. The only thing that matters when the final whistle blows is do you have more than they do? Who scored more points? That's it. The other way, Alex. 
So 19 seconds on the shot clock here. Titans ball on the end line. John, the word efficient comes to mind in, in what they're doing today, which is maybe something they haven't had for a while. Very efficient. You're efficient doing the things you need to do. You're going to have success, potentially success, potential success. Yeah, it seemed, I mean, it was a very uh, specific game plan of what they were trying to do, yep. and they've been executing it. So man up here, that, that was a high hit that I noticed. And so the Titans with an opportunity here, man up. Good chance to take the lead. Everybody, everybody runs the same man up. Good defense there by Robert Morris. Here goes the wheel. Yep. Fires, that'll be wide. Bernie pulled it wide. You can't step away from the target. You gotta step to the target. Time ticking on that penalty. Long range, no, that's a little too far out, coach. Not what you want on the man up. 17th best goalie in the country is gonna eat that stuff up. Oh yeah, all day long. And then wave to his mom, Tori, in the stands. There you go. So Robert Morris kills off the penalty and they will speed into the offensive zone with an opportunity to break this deadlock tie at eights as we are under 10 minutes in this one. A-Sun action on A-Sun Wednesday across the country. Now we've been chasing guys out a little farther as the as half gets deeper. Long range, Hemi's got that one. Same thing on one end of the other. Good scouting report though for the goaltender because he's been able to be sort of close to where they're shooting. So somebody did a good job on the on the yeah. shooting charts. And, and two very good goaltenders. I've been very impressed with both of yeah. them, the, both their plays today. Here we go, look at that, backside, and Titans will take the lead. Hello, 9-8. Unsettled. Unsettled Same action. Right hello, 9-8, hello, Titan lead. Nine minutes left. Aiden Bishop goes tricky, tricky, tricky. He picks up his third of the day, and that's nice to see somebody else stepping up in the offensive role. First career hat trick for Aiden Bishop at the collegiate level. Alex right now, now gives him five on the season. But you said, Coach, unsettled. Unsettled. That's where the Titans need to live. Well, that's breaks too, right? Yep. You're making your own breaks, and that five ball helps ball with that process. Ball. We're going to get a jump. Robert Morris jump. Oh, yep. And that's going to be a penalty on Robert Morris. Off the faceoff. And so the Titans, it's the third violation by Mr. Steven Delamanca. As we get closer to that five-minute mark, it'll be interesting to see if the experience that Robert Morris has had from playing in championships in the NCAA last year sort of finds itself into their process because right now they're pressing. Yeah, they're pressing, and the Titans are, are taking advantage of that. And I think... You know they're really executing. I think that I think discipline and they're they're taking their time. They're not rushing, and and they're really just. I think they're doing a great job of really, you know, doing things that I don't think Robert Morris expected them to do or want them to do. So man up here, off of the faceoff. Uh, hello, and right on cue, as I mentioned, Bernie had been quiet, and he is awoken and put the Titans up 10-8. Long range, got by Nate Randall, and the Titans continue to perform very well. I think this is what everyone has been hoping for and looking for if you're a Titan fan out there. You know, even going back to last year. Well, like you and six, it's been, you know, a month since you've had, well, longer than that, 13 yeah. months since yeah, the last go all the way back. Game. Yep. There's a good, just, look at that. See, that was a win by Robert Morris, but a good, good closeout, and the Titans will force the turnover on the faceoff and take possession. When we talked to Chris on Monday for replay, there was a discussion about, you know, not winning. It. Not winning does have an effect. Yeah. And to suggest that it doesn't is not realistic. Yeah, I mean, it, you're coaching a sport at right. the Division One level. I mean, you, you have to win. I mean, winning and it, matters. And it filters all the way down to the, the towel boy. It yes, does. Cause it, it filters into our booth, right? Yeah. 
I mean, hot dogs are not going to be half off if they keep winning like this, Coach. Now, I'll tell you what, another goal here could mean three goals. There's that, there's that low pass again, but a good pickup. Bishop's got it up top. He's feeling it. And possession goes back to the same point, 30 seconds now. We've just wasted, not wasted, we've just ran 30 seconds off the clock. Yeah, that was Pronger. I thought it was Bishop. That's Pronger back behind. He's got one on the day. Pronger never played that. And they're moving guys around. I think it's we, we you know we mentioned last week about throwing the kitchen sink at Utah and it that didn't work out so well. Fires got it. There we go. That's Bernie again. And so now you got your leading scorer stepping up, who had been on the Schneid all day with other people stepping up, and now you give it to the man who's leading the team in scoring, and that's another one. I think I used the word earlier, and I'll use it again. Deliberate. Yeah. It's. Rossi now. You got everyone involved. Bishop's got a hat trick. He had Pronger with a goal. And now you got Bernie taking over in the fourth here as he's got two straight back to back to put the Titans up 11 8 here with 7.26 remaining. Very exciting down here at Titan Field. And there's a clean win and a good look there. A nice little one two punch there. And we got a break here for Robert Morris. But it goes high. There you go. Unforced turnover. They had it. They press. Had a, press and more press. They had a good look, and that ball just got up and over toward yeah. the Sitco sign, and the Titans are going to take over with a. The hair more to get rid of Am I missing something on the scoreboard? Three goal not, lead. We lost our lead here. I don't know how they scored two. We got eight. We got ten up on the board. There we go. One more down. Yep. One more. There we up. go. Nope. Long way. <laughs> Do not adjust your screen, folks. Zoom in a little bit more. <laughs> now that's right. You're not seeing things. There we go. So 11-8 here. All right, here we go. Get the big bucks to pay for the small the yeah, details. Exactly right, Coach. Alex. <laughs> so what are we going to do? Are they going to run some clock? Take their time. Just keep doing what they're doing. Wait. And, and, and if you're Robert Morris and you're, you're Coach McDonald, you know, what are you doing here? When do you start pressing out even more? They're getting matched up now. Yep. Luke Majek has got it. He's got one. So he keeps on zoom. 25 seconds left on the shot clock. Hold on the zoom. There we go. Bernie's feeling it. Bernie's feeling it. Hello. Give him a hat trick in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Number nine, foul number nine, six career. Luke's taken over, and he's put the Titans now up four goals. Boy, that is something else. That's what big players do, don't they, Coach? They do. And it's the same sweeping left hand coming across the. He's just blowing. It's not. It's not fancy. He's just blowing it by him. So Bernie goes hat trick in the last four minutes. Six career hat trick. Six career hat trick for Bernie. Ryan Boy, that is just a great performance by a great player. He's been doing it for a long time here at U of D. You realize hat trick is only a hockey thing. Well, I like to use it anyway, Coach. And when you're scoring 24 goals in a game, three goals doesn't. All right, Coach. Now you're I getting technical. I don't know the if people. there's a, an equivalent to what the hat trick would be. <laughs> I, would, I, could, I could make something up. In a, in a low-scoring yeah. hockey game. A helmet trick? Yeah. What I'm saying, in a hat trick, typically it's under yeah, like three, four, five goals is a lot in hockey. True. Not yeah. necessarily. If you had a three or four yeah. goal yeah. game right. in lacrosse, you'd say it's kind of boring. I, game. I can see some validity in that, Coach. I'll give it to you. <laughs> But it's too late now. I've already done it. I've all also right. I know coined the, the run DMC tricky, tricky, tricky that people like to. So, no, all good. No, Bernie has, has put up three here in the last five minutes, and the Titans have taken now a commanding lead here with 548 remaining in this one, looking to pick up win number one on the season for head coach Chris Colon. And he's going to do it again here. He's firing again. And he, oh, my goodness gracious. Hello, Mary. There we go, right there. That's number four in a row for Ryan Bernie, and he is single-handedly catapulting the Titans to a commanding lead. If you're Craig McDonald, don't you have to ask yourself where the, where the, the adjacent slide's coming from? Uh, I think he swept he, you four straight times on the four straight plays, and you haven't stopped it. I think, he's, I think he's going to go left, Coach. I but think I'm he's going to go where's left. Where's the adjacent no, slide? No, I know. I got it. But Bernie, again, the same thing. It's almost a replay, and four straight, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, goes Bernie, 13-8. We're going to get a timeout by Coach McDonald and Robert Morris, and the excitement abound here at Titan Field is infectious. 
I think if the score stays in the same neighborhood, it'll be interesting when the. Right there, Ross. Oh, we'll come back to that. No, we're good. This is this is great action here for the Titans. No, what I was going to say was if you if you can imagine seeing this if this comes close to the score at the end, and you're a casual fan of lacrosse, and you see it look down at your phone, you're gonna you're gonna be shocked. You're gonna think there's an error. You're going to hit but, the refresh button, but, in, in, but it's not. In Robert Morris' case, how come you don't have somebody – take his left hand away, overplay him, and make him go right. Yeah. Well, and, and, they've, and they've shut him down all game. That's the thing. I mean, the, you know, the, you could see that they've overplayed him when he's had the ball throughout the whole course of the game, and then in the fourth he gets loose, and maybe that's the press out because they're pressing. Could be. So he scores two goals. I call timeout. Yeah. Double the guy, come across the other side, put a – you know, whatever you got to do. Yeah. No, no adjacent – I'm I'm just shocked. Well, it's it, it's it's been this kind of game for Robert Morris. We mentioned it, right? I mean, you you kept saying I'm I'm looking for that you know that Robert Morris team that we've seen and we're accustomed to to show up. And the Titans really haven't allowed them. And no. it's been a it's been a kind of a turnover here, a little play here, a little play there. Well, again, you frustrate an opponent with better people, and eventually sometimes they fold and you come out of it, which is what's happened. But to not make the adjustments is I, I'm just I'm all, I guess I'm a little shocked. Yeah. But well, the one the, the the one three two zone is what's been a key to taking away the wraparounds. So give the coaching staff some credit for coming up with a a process that at least solidified the defense against a pretty good offensive opponent. Yeah, one hundred percent. And this one is far from over. I mean, we got five minutes left in the game. You know, the 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 the, the face off is is critical. But the Titans are in a, in a great position here to pick up win number one on the season. Let's take a look uh, across the A-Sun here on A-Sun Wednesday. We got our first final of the day. Mercer defeated Bellarmine 15 to 12. We've got, is it Linwood? Yep. Defeated Queens at 12 to five. Oh, nope, that one is not done, sir. There's a little time left in the fourth on that one. That is not a final. And then we got Utah up 10-4 on Air Force, 6.51 left in the half there. But a big win for the Titans back here as we are under five minutes in this one. Titans leading 13-8. Aiden Bishop with it. Or is that Pronger? Pronger back behind the goal. He's got one on the day. And the Titans looking to run some clock. We're going to get a turnover, however, and now Robert Morris is looking to go the other way. Ball down. As Coach mentioned, who wants it more? And the Titans are going to come out of there with it. And Coach Colin's going to call a, an immediate timeout to get things straight. Smart. That's a ball possession. That was smart. That's a real smart Especially ball. at this time of the game at 422 left with the lead. Don't want any unsettled goals going the other way. Keep it right here. All right, so we're going to take a break. We have not paid any bills, really, in this second half. So we're going to need to pay some bills. Coach, we're going to come back for the finale of this one. Titans leading, heading close to the end of the fourth. We'll be right back. Detroit Mercy itself definitely values who you are as a person. Not only did I take what I learned in the academic world, but I was able to apply that in a professional setting and be the first one of my family to graduate from college. Detroit Mercy. Build a boundless future. Hi, I'm Molly, and I'm Abby. We're sisters, and I'm older, but I'm smarter. But other than that, we're pretty much the same. We both play soccer, we both injured the same knee, we both had surgery on the same day, and we both rehabbed a team rehabilitation. Get back in the game. Get the individual one-on-one -on -one attention you need at Team Rehabilitation, Michigan's fastest growing network of physical therapy providers, dedicated to helping you and those you love to be pain-free and get their lives back. Visit team-rehab.com. Team works. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. And we're back on the campus of the University of Detroit Mercy. The conclusion of this A-Sun midday matchup, midweek Titans versus the Colonials. Titans lead at 13 to eight, 422 remaining. Good time out there by Coach Cohen to retain the possession, keep it in the zone, and try and salt this one away, Coach. No, you, you, you absolutely have to call timeout in that situation just to gain ball possession. And there's a double right out of the gate, and that's going to cause a turnover here. Robert Morris, we got a flag down. We're going to get a penalty on Robert Morris. 
Yeah, it's back to pressing. Down a little bit. Bring it down. You're down yeah, five. Little, yeah, you and start to press. And a pick up a penalty. They changed goalies as well. I noticed that one as Nate Randall had come out. And that was probably to go out and double, take Randall out, go down put number 50 in the game for Robert Morris. Oh, he also may be faster. Yeah. You know, you're in a 10 man ride, so yeah. you, you, maybe you got a goalie that's a little bit bigger and a little bit quicker. Yeah, number 50 there, Kyle Reiner. I'm with you, Alex, real quick. A junior out of Scranton, PA. So, Titans now, four minutes left, man up opportunity. All right, now do you run clock? That's what I was going to ask you. Do you run clock or do you yeah, score? Gonna, I'm looking at that big uh, clock at 75. Uh, He's doing exactly what he was expected to do. Make them come out and uh, then, attack, then attack on the back side. I was going to ask you the same question, Coach. Yep. Just stand there. You take all the clock in the world. Yeah, they don't need to do anything. You also have one more guy than they do. Right. Tough well, position to be in for Robert no, Morris, this is, but that's smart. The they're, flag. they're making all the right statistical choices. Does that make sense? Yep. Bernie, who has really, really taken over here in this fourth, he's got four straight goals for the Titans. But if he gets across this defense left-handed and scores, Craig McDonald gets fired tomorrow. I, I think you're going to lose your mind in this booth, Coach. Time ticking down here. Titans looking for win number one on the season. Commanding lead with three minutes remaining and the ball and man up. All right, we're switching into. And here comes Robert Morris. They're going to come out now, and they're going to need to press out. they got no choice. Bernie's going to shake and bake. Bernie's looking to go. Bernie again. Oh, look at that. Great save there. Sliding save by the netminder for Robert Morris. Kylie Reiner diving across the middle to break up Bernie's bid for goal number five in the quarter. Go to the ball. See how he stands? Yep. Long range. Wow. Got it. Just finished. Luke Majak. You don't recover from that. From the 35-yard line, finds the back of the net. And I think you can say the Titans are speeding very, very fast towards win number one on the season, Coach. If there is not uh, victory behind this one at the end of the double zeros, then something really went wrong in the last two. I think so. I think Mother Nature would have played a role in this one. But, you know, it, it, they deserve it. You know, they have played very, very well today. They've executed. They've been disciplined. You know, the, the face-offs, when you look at the numbers, aren't great. He just won a face-off. But he just won one right there clean. That's the first one I've seen. And then we got a penalty down as well. Robert Morris now probably getting a little chippy. And I, I would not want to be on this bus ride back to Pennsylvania, Coach. It's one game. One game. So we're getting close to two minutes here. Got to be careful here. We don't want any chippiness. We're going to get a couple of checks here. We got a flag down as it is. Titans. Looking to milk this one away. And all the fans that have come out to Titan Field today to support the Titans in this weather are being treated to, to a great, great win for the Titans. Program number 16 was on top of the box it's waving. And I know his high school coach, Jim Carl, would have lost his mind. You never wave for the ball because it brings attention to yourself. You're, you're sort of stealth and slide in behind guys. Progar. Progar, Progar. yes. Most goals since we beat VMI last year. I'm sure if I mispronounce that, I'll, I'll have some some lessons for. Oh, that. I've been butchering it all day, Coach. And Coach Carl, let me know. Coach Carl, let, let us know. Yes, he did. The name correctly. So the 14 goals put up by the Titans today, the most since last season against VMI to start the season last year. Would you predict this? No, no, uh, no. I don't, I don't think. I don't think. It's, I mean, you know, you think about it, and, and you're waiting for that. You know that that spark, that switch, or something to click, and it, and you really see it today. And it's it's been consistent through the whole game, and we've seen signs of it. We've seen some waves of it in certain games, but we've never seen it for the entire game. And I think today we have. It's been interesting to look at the scores with midweek games and what happens on the next weekend Ooh. within the A Sun, and find out if that travel and that short distance and all the other stuff. That interesting. Goes with it. Now they go, they're headed down this weekend, right? Yep. On the bus again, it'll be interesting to see next week what happens to that game when they come back. Yeah. 
So we got to keep a track. We have to keep track of the numbers in that situation. I think that'll Saturday. that'll make a huge. We difference. got Queens on Saturday, Coach. Queens on Saturday. I don't know what's going on. Go to the left a little bit, Rossi. So the Titans with the man up. Go left a little bit. I can't even see Rossi. And they're just going to sit there and hold it. Robert Morris is just content just to sit this one out as well. I'm sure Coach McDonald said, all right, that's enough. They had a couple of chippy shots there, got a penalty. We're under one minute. And now Robert Morris is going to jump out, try and double and cause some turnovers here. 13 on the shot clock. That one's going to be turned over and go to the Colonials. But we are under one minute of play here. Detroit Mercy Titans 14, Robert Morris 8 in this one and head coach Colin and the, the team looking for that victory number one and it is very very close with you, Alex. to coming to fruition it's a great win but now you have to catapult it to mean something you, you can't go down south and Alex, to Queens here, South Carolina and, and get our a, you know no absolutely not you got to build off of it and I think that's what they've been working towards I mean this is it, it was really just a different game plan it was different than last week it's yep. different than the week before it's almost it like they've been trying to find you know really that right formula um, you know and, and and put it together and I think that's what they've done today and so we're going to count this one down for the Titans as they're going to win this one 14 to 8 and that'll do it, folks. Congratulations to head coach Chris Colon and the University of Detroit Mercy Titans as they defeat Robert Morris here at Titan Field, 14-8, to victory number one. Congratulations is ordered, right, coach? Absolutely. It's a great game plan. It was, it was executed correctly. It was consistent. And if you look at stats, I think if you look at stats at the end of the game, then I, I, I think that's part of what uh, what happens in uh, why they win. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Shots on goal, or shots 47-31. Shots on goal 27-17, all in favor of the Titans. You look at clears, you look at everything across the board, except faceoffs, which really didn't play in that big of a role. How important becomes a 1-3-2 defense? And they're not going to face the talent that they faced both on Saturday against Utah and today against Robert Morris. So that also, the schedule also helps a little bit. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. they got a game coming up on Saturday, see if they can build off of it. I think they're very evenly matched with Queens. I think that is going to be a, 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 this is a perfect, perfect time for them to get this win and then head on to Queens to see what happens. That's awesome. All right. So we are good, folks. Great game. Thanks, for everybody, for coming out. Thanks for tuning in today and listening to us. Uh, I'm John Losey. You can follow me on Twitter, at Lax Losey. Coach, anything to say as we sign off? No. There's one of those uh, opportunities. and always fun working with you. I think. That was a great day today. A great day today. Everybody, have a great Wednesday. Finish out your week. Have a great weekend. And we look forward to seeing you again at the next home game here at Titan Field. Thanks to PJ and everybody on the cameras. Appreciate everybody here. We'd like to to say thanks to everybody out there shout out to coach carl again and uh, take care everybody have a great week